Good evening, students. I have brought today chapter three, The Little Girl from your class ninth textbook, Beehive. The Little Girl has been written by Catherine Mansfield. Catherine Mansfield was born and brought up in New Zealand. She was a poet and a story writer who has written stories in a very lucid, in a very clear and simple manner. The story, The Little Girl, is not only, as the title goes, the story of a little girl, but in fact, the writer has tried to bring out the relation between the children and their parents. Before we start with this story, I would just mention one thing and discuss with you. Many a time it happens in your house also, you are doing something, your parents would stop you, sometimes they would scold you, sometimes they will object to it. At that time, what happens, you don't like. You don't like your parents at that time. It does not mean that you don't love them. You do love your parents, but you don't like because you want to do what you want to do, isn't it? And at that time, what happens? You get so agitated. In fact, sometimes you start comparing your parents with your friend's parents and you find your friend's parents more loving and better. But Gradually, when you grow up, you start understanding and then your feelings change for your parents. Then you realize the importance of parents in your life. Does it happen or not, Akanksha? life Right? So, yes, ma'am. Right. The little girl is the main character in this story whose name is Kezia. Kezia is the protagonist of the story. Now, what is a protagonist? I tell you, protagonist meaning the main character of the story. She is the principal character of the story. So the whole story revolves around Kezia, the protagonist, and through her story, the writer has tried to convey to the young readers that the parents are always loving. They always have love and affection for their children. But sometimes if they are harsh with you, it is because they care for you. All right. So with this, we start the story. To the little girl, he was a figure to be feared and avoided. To the little girl, the little girl, Kezia. To Kezia, he, he is Kezia's father. So this is the relation between Kezia and her father. Her father was a figure, he was such a person to be feared. Meaning her father was such a person in the house that she was afraid of him. Usually I have found the children are very friendly with their fathers, very playful. But in Kezia's case, Kezia was afraid of her father and avoided, and avoided meaning she would try her best to miss the moments. She would try her best to miss the chances when she has to interact with her father. She avoided talking to her father. She did not like something very strange, but there is a reason. Every morning before going to work, he came into her room and gave her a casual kiss. Before going to his office, father would come to her room and give her a casual kiss, meaning he would express his love and affection for Kezia. That's what the parents do, to which she responded, with goodbye father, she would, how she would reply to her father's expression of love and affection, 
simply saying goodbye father and goodbye father she would say in such a way as if she is waiting for the father to go yes she used to wait in the morning when the father would go to his office because as long as the father was there she was scared and when father was not there in the house she was very happy and oh there was a glad sense of relief when she heard the noise of the carriage growing fainter and fainter down the long road carriage meaning his car or his vehicle so she would wait she would bid goodbye to her father and she would hear the vehicle moving away moving away when she would find that the sound has got fainted meaning she could not hear the sound of the vehicle anymore then she would experience then she would have a glad sense of relief glad meaning happy she was very happy she used to have a feeling of relief relief from what relief from the fear relief from the tension relief from the nervousness she was stressed free now there were there was no fear that she had to be careful as the father is around now she was relieved she does not have the fear of anyone such was the relation between kesia and her father in the evening when he came home she stood near the staircase and heard his loud voice in the hall in the evening father would come home from the office as, and she would keep standing near the staircase because she knew, knew that now she would be hearing his loud voice father used to be very loud in his speech he was very harsh in his speech there are many examples you will find where no one, nowhere we get an evidence that the father was polite no he was not polite now when he comes home from the office he would say bring my key into the drawing room hasn't the paper come yet father go and see if my paper is out there and bring me my slippers this is how the father would speak when he comes in the evening is he polite no no where he is making a polite request please go and see if my paper is out there please bring me my slippers please bring my tea no father never had been polite he would never request he would order he would order now what does it suggest us about the father one thing is that father was impolite harsh second thing is that father was dominating right he was dominating he was authoritative dominating and authoritative hota hai jisko hum kehte hain na khub robila rob wala har kisi ko command dena order dena jiski aadat hoti hai right so this i think now you would start understanding why kesia was afraid of her father because he was never polite he would never speak sweetly kesia mother would call to her if you are a good girl you can come down and take off father's boots now this is mother mother is just opposite her father father is very harsh but mother is very polite very gently she would turn to kesia telling her that she is a good girl so she should go down and she should bring she should take off she should pull off her father's boots now this is something children this is something really annoying isn't it that father is such a big man can't he take off his shoes himself that he needs someone 
he needs his wife to pull up his shoes or he needs his daughter so all these are the examples these are the evidences which suggest how dominating the father was slowly the girl would slip down the stairs more slowly still across the hall and push open the drawing room door slowly she would slip down she would go down quietly down the stairs and then she will just move across the hall where she would find him uh, she would just go across the hall and then try to enter the drawing room as she would open the drawing room door by that time he had his spectacles on and looked at her over them in a way that was terrifying to the little girl by that time he had his spectacles on spectacles you know glasses right by that time yes ma'am yes he had his spectacles on now here i want to add to your knowledge akanksha i want to tell you spectacles we wear spectacles we wear on nose why i am telling you this because many children they say the man was wearing spectacles on his eyes which is wrong spectacles are worn on nose you must have seen our spectacles rest on our nose not on eyes right so remember he had his spectacles on he was wearing his spectacles on his nose and he looked at kezia over them over his spectacles the way he had been looking at kezia that was terrifying to the little girl that was terrifying to the little girl meaning that was making kezia scared that was making kezia nervous she was terrified she was afraid of her father well kezia hurry up and pull off these boots and take them outside he called kezia hurry up fast quick and pull off these boots and take off my shoes and take them outside he would order his wife that is kezia's mother he would order kezia as well have you been a good girl today this is just an expression that he just wanted to be sure that how was the day and kezia she could say it was a good day she could say oh i had a nice time but no kezia was so scared that she said i don't know father now the way she spoke i little don't know what is it called this is called stammering this is called stammering when someone in one speech keeps on repeating one particular word or a letter of a word continuously and is not able to speak properly that is called stammering or stuttering so kesia was stammering now the point here is why would kesia stammer right okay is that clear here yes ma'am okay yes you 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 you, you don't know if you stutter like that mother will have to take you to the doctor father said you don't don't know the father imitated her he imitated her he wanted to tell her hey you are stammering you are not speaking properly and then he told her if she keeps stuttering if she keeps stammering like this then she would need a doctor then mother would take her to the doctor then it is something very serious but do you think that really she this was some something a serious matter do you think that kezia needed a doctor 
Akanksha, do you think that KCR really needed a doctor? Ma'am. Uh, yes. Ma'am, Shayat. Okay. Okay. KCR did not need the doctor. You know why? Look at this, what the story writer said. She never stuttered with other people. Had quite given it up, but only with father. While she is talking to others, she does not stammer. She does not stutter. If she talks to you, she would not stutter. If she talks to me, if she talks to her mother, if she talks to others, she would not stutter. She would not stammer. She, would, she had given it up. She had stopped stammering. Yes, the problem was there in the beginning. But she had stopped stammering now. But she does stammer when she talks to her father. Because then she was trying so hard to say the words properly. When she talks to her father, she just finds it very difficult to speak. She finds it very difficult to express herself. And due to that inability, she would stammer. What do you think is the reason that she would stammer? Kya reason ho sakta hai, Akansha? Kyo stammer karti hogi when she talks to her father? Yes, what do you think? Ma'am, Shaya se wo darti thi. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Why she would stammer when she is talking to her father? Because she would get nervous while talking to her father. Because her father had never appeared friendly with her. He had not been soft. He had been harsh. Right? When father saw the girl, she was stammering. He said, what's the matter? What are you looking so wretched about? He, he snubbed her. He scolded her. What's wrong with you? Why you are looking so wretched? Why you are looking so unhappy? What is the reason? Why you are looking so unhappy? Madam, I wish you taught this child not to appear in the brink of suicide. Here, Kezia, carry my teacup back to the table carefully. This is how he would speak. He turned to her mother and he told the mother that he wanted that the mother should have taught this girl to appear meaning to behave happily, to appear happily, not to appear sadly, as if she was going to end her life. On the brink of suicide is to uh, end your life. But here, what he means to say, that she was looking so sad. So he wanted that mother should teach. Mother should teach the girl, because mother is bringing up the girl, right? That she should teach the girl that she should always appear, she should always present herself happily in front of her father. And then he tells Kezia, carry my teacup back to the table carefully. Pick up my teacup and put it there on the table carefully. He was so big, his hands and his neck, especially his mouth when he yawned, he was, the, he was the head of the family. The father was the head of the family. And then too, being so authoritative, Kezia would imagine. Kezia had an image of her father in her mind that he was a man so big in size with big hands, big neck. And his mouth was also big especially when he yawned. Yawning is, yawning is when you are resting and you just, you know that open your mouth wide for a few seconds and then you put your hand onto your mouth. That is called yawning. Thinking about him alone was like thinking about a giant. For her, 
a giant a giant is a monster monsters are huge in size right so she had visualized her father like a giant like a monster why because he was so harsh in his speech he was so authoritative i hope it is clear yes ma'am okay on sunday afternoons grandmother sent her down to the drawing room to have a nice talk with father and mother grandmother was very understanding on sundays the family was at home so grandmother would like kezia to spend a good time with her both the parents so she would send her to the drawing room so that she could sit with both the parents and she could talk with them but the little girl always found mother reading and father stretched out on the sofa his handkerchief on his face his feet on one of the best cushions sleeping soundly and snoring now whenever the girl would go to the drawing room on sundays what she would find no interaction between the father and the mother mother is engaged she would find mother engaged in reading and father stretching out meaning relaxing stretching out meaning resting on the sofa covering his face with a handkerchief and throwing his feet on one of the best cushions and sleeping soundly deeply and snoring snoring in the deep sleep when you take deep breaths it is called snoring hindi mein kya kehte hain isko akanksha kuch idea hai मैम मुझे मैम इसका आइडिया नहीं है जो लोग सोए सोए क्या करते हैं खास करके द मेन दे डू इट वेरी ऑफ्टन मैम सोए सोए लोग मैन जो करते हैं मेन भी करते हैं द विमेन आल्सो डू इट बट मेन मोस्टली डू इट एंड वी रियली लव मैम कराटे यस एक्सेक्टली राइट सो व्हाट इट इज जस्ट अ men they snore meaning wo kharate lete hain right so the father was snoring she sat on a stool gravely watched him until he woke and stretched and asked the time then looked at her she was sitting on a stool gravely seriously watching her father she was feeling quite neglected at that time because mother is engaged in reading father is sleeping so who to talk to right she had just been watching him till he woke up he stretched his arms and asked for the time hey what is the time and then he looked at the girl don't stare so kezia just a minute Don't stare so, Kezia. You look like a little brown owl. He told Kezia not to stare. He told Kezia just a minute, brother. Don't stare so, Kezia. You look like a little brown owl, because Kezia was staring at her, at him. So he is just scolded. Why are you staring? To stare meaning to look into one direction continuously. एक तरफ ही घूर घूर के देखते रहना, right? And then he compared Kezia with a little brown owl. now you will think that why she has been compared with the brown owl because uh, akanksha it is said that owl also looks as if the owl is staring 
and owl can sit staring at one thing for a long time without blinking his eye. I will just show you a picture. Here is a story also, you know, why the owls look like this. I think you can just a minute. Uh, sorry, Vita. Right. So uh, look at this picture. Can you see this picture? Yes, ma'am. Yes. This is the owl. Look at owl's eyes. And they're looking as if he is staring at one thing. Right? Yes, ma'am. As if he never blinks his eyes. As I look at it, I think that he doesn't have to be able to do it. So here is an old story. Right, going around on why exactly an owl can look so shocked and stare for such a long time. Anyway, I will share this very story with you, right, and on English forum, okay? And you must read, you will find it very interesting, right? Now let's get back to the lesson again. One day when she was kept indoors with a cold, her grandmother told her that father's birthday was next week and suggested she should make him a pin cushion for a gift out of a beautiful piece of yellow silk. One day she had caught with cold. She was suffering from cold. So she was told by the parents to stay in. Kamsha, please mute yourself. Yes, apna Yes, ma'am, I'm doing Thank you. Okay, so the parents had told her to stay in because she caught with cold. So she was with her grandmother who told her about her father's birthday. That father's birthday was there next week. So she suggested her that she should make a nice gift for her, for him. She got him a beautiful piece of yellow silk that she should make a pin cushion. Pin cushion meaning a small cushion for him. Laboriously, with a double cotton, the little girl stitched three sides. But what to fill it with? Laboriously meaning she walked very hard. She walked very hard. She put on a lot of effort, right? And she uh, tried to make a cushion. She stretched three sides of the cushion, but now the point was one side was left because she had to stuff it. She had to fill something in the cushion, but she didn't know what to fill it. That was the question. The grandmother was out in the garden and she wandered into mother's bedroom to look for scraps. Scraps meaning old and torn out small pieces of cloth or paper etc etc grandmother she had been to the garden maybe for a walk and kezia she wandered she walked into her mother's bedroom she went into her mother's bedroom to look for meaning to search for searching for scraps searching for some small pieces of paper or cloth. On the bed table, she discovered a great many sheets of fine paper, gathered them up, tore them into tiny pieces, and stuffed her in case, then sewed at the fourth side. She picked up those fine papers, sheets of paper. She wanted paper, she picked up. She didn't know what these papers were. She collected them and she tore them into small pieces she changed them into small pieces and she put them into that bag that she had made and then she sewed up meaning she stitched the fourth side also 
she stitched the fourth side also and thus made a cushion. That night, there was a hue and cry in the house. Hue and cry, a great noise. A great noise, noise full of anger. Can you guess who must be angry? Who do you think must be angry? The father. father. Yes, ma'am, father. Yes. Father's great speech for the proof authority had been lost. Where is the speech lost? Father was screaming, he was shouting, he was loud, he was angry because his speech that he had to deliver next day, he had to give a speech next day that has been lost. Now, do you know where it is? Kaan hogi pa father ki speech? Those fine papers, sheets of paper that Kezia had picked up to stuff the cushion. They were not the ordinary papers. They were not the waste papers. They were actually Kezia's father's speech. The text of the speech that he had to give the next day. Anyway, the father was unaware till then. He didn't know where it is. So the rooms were searched. Servants questioned. It was searched everywhere in all the rooms, those papers, but could not be traced. Servants were asked, but it could not be recovered. Finally, mother came into Kezia's home. Now mother thought that she should ask Kezia. She went to Kezia's room. Kezia, I suppose you didn't see some papers on a table in our room? She plainly asked Kezia. I think that you haven't seen any papers on a table in our room. And Kezia, a very innocent girl, instantly she said, Oh yes, I tore them up for my surprise. Now what does this suggest? That Kezia was so innocent. She never tried to hide because she never knew that she had done something wrong. Right? Instantly she told her mother, Oh yes, I've seen those papers. I picked them up. I collected and I tore them into pieces for my surprise. What was her surprise? What was Kezia's surprise? Kezia's surprise would be a surprise gift to her father on, her, on his birthday. So this is what she said that I am preparing a surprise gift for my father. So I tore them up for my surprise. What? Screamed mother. Screamed, cried. The mother cried. What? Oh my God, you tore them? Come straight down to the dining room this instant. This instant, meaning at once, immediately. She told Kezia to come down. Come down to the drawing room immediately. And she was dragged down to where father was pacing to and fro, hands behind his, his, his back. She dragged her, she pulled her down to the father, where father was pacing to and fro. Pacing meaning walking, walking here and there. With his hands behind his back, at the back. When does it happen? Have you ever noticed your father? with his hand behind his back and he is just moving to and fro, moving here and there. Aisa kab hota hai? Kab karte hai log? Haat piche, back ke piche karke aur phir tezi tezi se chalte hai, kabhi aate hai, kabhi jate hai. Aisa kab hota hai? When they are anxious, when they are worried, when they are tense. So father was extremely tense because he had lost his uh, speech. Well, he said sharply and mother explained. He stopped and stared at the child. Mother explained to the father what had happened to that speech. He stopped. 
and stared at the child. Did you do that? He asked Kezia, did you do that? Kezia, you have done that? No, 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 she whispered. Though Kezia is an honest girl, you see when she spoke to her mother, she told her very honestly, very truthfully, yes, I told them up, right? But here in front of father, she does not tell the truth. She says, no. And she whispers and again she stammers. Why she is unable to tell the truth to the father? Because she is scared. She is afraid of her father. Mother, go up to her room and fetch down the damned thing. The damned thing meaning that gift, that cushion that she was making. He orders the mother to go to her room and bring that down. And see that the child is put to bed this instant. And he told the mother to take this child away, to take Kezia and make her lie on the bed right now, immediately. Father was so angry, he never wanted to see her. I hope it is clear, Vita. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Trying too much to explain. She lay in the shadowed room, watching the evening light make a sad little pattern on the floor. She was crying so much, but she couldn't explain to her father. She was just lying in that shadowed room, in that room where there could reach only the evening light and thus a shadow. And there was gloominess in the room. The sadness prevailed in the room. Then father came into the room with a ruler in his hands. Ruler, do you know what is ruler? Ruler. Ruler to aap use karte na? Scale. Right? Mama, scale. Yes. Father came into the room with a scale. Oh my God. What is he going to do? Why is he carrying scale? Yes, Akanksha. What do you think is the father going to do with the scale? Ma'am, because his father was angry because he was very angry. Okay, then what will he do with the scale? Maybe he will kill him. Right, right. Because she had done something wrong. She didn't know, but yes, she had done something wrong. Can you guess what, she, what wrong she had done? What wrong she had done? She had collected the papers without asking, without permission. All right. Now father came into the room with a ruler in his hands. I am going to beat you for this, he said. He said that he would beat her. You were right, Akanksha. He was going to Yes, he said, I am going to beat you. I'm going to hit you with the scale. Oh, no, no, she screamed, hiding under the bedclothes. She was trying to hide herself under the bedclothes, trying to avoid, trying to protest. But he pulled them aside. But he pulled all the bedclothes aside and he could just catch Kesia. Sit up, he ordered. And hold out your hands. Show me your hands. You must be taught once and for all not to touch what does not belong to you. Here is the reason why father had beaten her with the scale. He said you must be taught once, meaning father wanted to teach her the lesson. What lesson? Not to touch what does not belong to you. Father wanted to teach her a lesson that she should not touch anything that is not hers, that does not belong to her. Jo cheez aap ki nahi hai, usko aap uski par, kisi aur ki permission ke bina use nahi kar sakte. Yehi lesson father usko dena chate the. Isi liye father ne 
father had been harsh but he became harsher that day right but it was for your birthday then only kezia had told her father that she made it for his birthday down came the ruler on her little pink palms but the father did not listen father did not listen to what kezia said but down came the ruler meaning he just hit with the scale on her little pink palms father ne uski ek nahi suni aur uski hatheli par scale se mara hours later when grandmother had wrapped her in a shawl and rocked her in the rocking chair the child clung to her soft body little time later some hours later grandmother she took her in her lap grandma ne usko apni godi mein bitha diya she wrapped her she covered her in a shawl and holding her in her lap she was rocking on the rocking chair and the child clung to her soft body meaning kezia was feeling very comfortable what did god make fathers for she sobbed she sobbed she was crying what kind of crying is this this is noiseless crying ye jo jo se rona jo hai wo nahi hota hai sobbing is when the tears roll down your eyes right there is slight sound just as for example you do don't you sob like this right okay so she said what did god make fathers for what does it mean the question she asked her grandmother why did god make fathers she what she is trying to say that the fathers should not have been made by god she was so afraid of her father that she asked her grandmother why god has made fathers fathers should not have been made fathers were not needed on the earth she is very innocent right here is a clean hanky darling grandmother tried to comfort her tried to pacify her tried to calm her down giving her a clean hanky telling her to clean it blow your nose go to sleep pet you'll forget all about it in the morning she told her to clean her nose and sleep down and in the morning she will forget everything yes turn it off please turn it off the mic one for you माइक बंद करो बेटा यस मैम यस मैम ऐसा होता है ना कई बार कि आपको डांट पड़ी रात को मम्मी ने डांटा या पापा ने डांटा है ना तो सोते वक्त थोड़ी देर तक तो बहुत गुस्सा आता है मॉर्निंग में उठते ही सब कुछ भूल जाते हैं आप इट है ना ऐसा यस मैम होता है हाँ सो दिस इज वॉट द ग्रैंड मदर वॉज ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन टू हर स्लीप डाउन यू विल फर्गेट एवरीथिंग वेन यू गेट अप इन द मॉर्निंग i tried to explain to father but he was too upset to listen to my and grandmother assured her that she also spoke to her father but father was so furious he was so angry at that time that he was not ready to listen but the child never forgot but kezia grandmother thought next morning when she gets up she would forget everything but no kezia did not forget it next time she saw him she quickly put both hands behind her back and a red color flew into her cheeks oh my god she was so scared of her father after this incident when father had hit her on her palms with the scale now next time whenever she would see her father she would immediately put her hands behind her back why to hide her hands because she was afraid that father would again 
start hitting her hands and a red color flew into her cheeks and her cheeks would get red out of fear usko apne father ka itna dar baith gaya tha ki jab bhi wo apne father ko dekhti apne dono haath piche kar leti kyunki usko ye dar lagta tha ki shayad fir wo inhi haathon pe scale se marenge aur uske cheeks uske gaal ekdam red ho jate the dar ke mare so you can easily make out that i do not say father did not love her father definitely loved her you will get the evidence later but father was definitely harsh that's why the girl was so scared the mcdonalds lived next door now these mcdonalds ye wo mcdonalds nahi hai jahan aap burger khane jate hain right the mcdonalds are the neighbors they were kezia's neighbors next door neighbors padosi the okay they had five children looking through a gap in the fence the little girl saw them playing tag in the evening mr mcdonald he was their neighbor mcdonald they had five children and kezia would often see through the gap in the fence that they were playing a game tag both the mcdonald <laughs> mr mcdonald and mrs mcdonald they both would play a game tag with their children right now where where would she see from from the fence what is the fence fence is not boundary wall but ghar ki boundary ko jo cover karte hain this is called fence right कहीं कोई हेच लगा देता है कहीं कोई वुडन फेंसिंग करते हैं आजकल तो लोग ग्रिल लगाते हैं आयरन बार लगाते हैं राइट द फादर विद द बेबी माउ ऑन इज शोल्डर टू लिटिल गर्ल्स हैंगिंग ऑन टू हिज कोट पॉकेट रैन राउंड एंड राउंड द फ्लावर बेस शेकिंग विद लाफ्टर वट इज इट मीन इट मीन्स दैट ऑल दो चिल्ड्रन दे हैव बीन प्लेइंग विद देयर फादर and father was so playful right koi father ke sath hans raha hai koi uh, roll ho raha hai aur uh, koi coat pocket mein uh, ke sath hang kar raha hai etc etc once she saw the boys turn the hose on him and he tried to catch them laughing all the time once she saw that one of the sons of mcdonalds He turned the hose. Hose क्या होता है? Hose पानी का pipe होता है, right? He turned the hose pipe on to Mr. McDonald's and started started watering. But Mr. McDonald, he never felt angry. He enjoyed it. He tried to catch them laughing all the time. He laughed and he made his children laugh. So this is what she had been looking at it. That how they had been playing with. their father but she could not play with her father because her father is not as cheerful as mr mcdonald was then it was she decided there were different sorts of father then she thought maybe that all the fathers they are different there are different types of father some fathers are friendly some are not some are very cheerful but some are harsh suddenly is that clear so till here this is the first part of the story where we have got to know that how father was so harsh and bitter and there was a great distance between kezia and her father because kezia was afraid of her father but in the second part of the story you will find the father being different and so will kezia become different right the suddenly one day mother became ill and she and grandmother went to hospital one day what happened kezia's mother she fell sick she was hospitalized now somebody has to stay with the mother in the hospital so grandmother also accompanied the mother the little girl was left alone in the house 
with Alice the cook. Now Kezia was alone at home. There was their cook Alice also to take care of her. That was all right in the daytime. In the daytime, she did not miss her mother. And she never felt that the mother and the grandmother, they are away. But while Alice was putting her to bed, she grew suddenly afraid. Now it was the night approaching. It was the time to sleep. Alice was putting her to bed. But the thought of bed made her feared. Alice ne usko bed par letaya, to wo bohat dar gai. Kyun dar gai? What will I do if I have a nightmare? She was afraid. What will she do if she has nightmares? Nightmares kya hote hain? Nightmares hote hain bad dreams. जो अच्छे ड्रीम्स होते हैं उनको तो हम ड्रीम ही कहते हैं ड्रीम मीनिंग अ गुड ड्रीम बट नाइट मेयर मीनिंग अ बैड ड्रीम सो इफ शी हैज सीन अ बैड ड्रीम व्हाट विल शी डू आई ऑफन हैव आकांक्षा माइक को ऑफ करो बेटा आई ऑफन हैव नाइट मेयर्स एंड देन ग्रानी टेक्स मी इनटू हर बेड आई कांट स्टे इन द डार्क It all gets whispering. She told Alice that she often experiences nightmares. Aksar usko gatte sapne aate hain raat ko. But when she uh, experiences a bad dream, her grandmother is always by her side, and she takes care. But now in the dark, she can't stay in the dark. Because in the darkness it gets whispery. She hears number of faint sounds. You just go to sleep, child," said Alice, pulling off her socks. Alice was very caring. She just removed her socks and told her to go to sleep and don't you scream and wake your poor pa. She told her that the father is sleeping in the other room and she should not scream. She should not cry. Otherwise. the father would also wake up so this is how she had been trying to assure her right but the same old but the same old nightmare came the butcher with a knife and a rope who came nearer and nearer smiling that dreadful smile while she could not move could only stand still crying out grandma grandma she woke shivering to see father beside her head a candle in his hand ab hua kya alice gayi aur wahi usko bura sapna dikhai dene laga kya bura tha us sapne mein how it was a nightmare how it was a bad dream she saw a butcher butcher is the one who slaughters the animals बुचर होता है जिसको हिंदी में कसाई कहते हैं जो नाइफ से जानवरों को काटता है राइट सो शी सॉ अ बुचर विद अ नाइफ एंड अ रोप एंड इन अर ड्रीम शी सॉ दैट ही वाज कमिंग नियर टू हर एंड गिविंग दैट ड्रेडफुल दैट हॉरर दैट हॉरिबल स्माइल एंड शी शी वाज जस्ट स्टैंडिंग स्टिल शी कुड नॉट मूव she could not move and she cried out grandma grandma and then she got up when she got up she saw that she was shivering kaap rahi thi wo dar ke mare uth gayi wo uth ke usne kya dekha ki wo kaap dar ke mare buri tarah se kaap rahi hai but what else made her shiver was to see father beside her bed this was very strange for her that her father was standing by her bedside uske father ne uske cheekhne ki awaaz suni ho gayi to fatafat ek candle apne haath mein lekar aa gaye aur wo hairan ho gaye apne father ko wahan dekh kar so now now what do you think that father is still harsh or he is loving now father is harsh or father is loving 
Yes, Akanksha. Ma'am, father, to ma'am uh, loving you, ga. Right now he is loving. Right, he is loving. What's the matter? He said. He showed his concern. Pucha, usko fikr thi uske. Kisi ne pucha kya hua? What's the matter? Kya hua? What is wrong? Oh, a butcher, a knife. I want granny. Because she was not used to getting her father. Usko aadat nahi thi father ke saath apna nightmare share karne ki. And then she said, she told her father, a butcher, a knife I've seen. I want granny. Mujhe granny chahiye. Grandmother chahiye. He blew out the candle, went down and caught up the child in his arms, carrying her along the passage to the big bedroom. He took the child in his arms to his bedroom. A newspaper was on the bed. He put away the paper. Then carefully tucked up the child. There was lying a newspaper on his bed. He just removed that paper. And then he covered Kezia very nicely in his bed. He lay down beside her. Half asleep still. Still with the butcher's smile all about her it seemed. She crept close to him. Snuggled. Her head under his arm, held tightly to his shirt. A uh, half asleep still, still with the butcher's smile all about her, it seemed. Abhi bhi wo deri hui thi. Kyunki abhi bhi usko wo butcher's smile dikhai de raha tha. Dar ke maare, she crept close to him. She clanged. So, aur apne father ke aur nazdik aai. Hug kar liya usne father ko. She snuggled. She snuggled her head under his arm. Apne father ki arms. Arms meaning baju ki niche. Apna sir usne chupa liya. And he held his fa her father's shirt tightly. Then the dark did not matter. She lay still. Now she was lying comfortably. Now she was not even afraid of darkness. Yo, rub your feet against my legs and get them warm, said father. Oh, father was so concerned, so caring. She never knew. He never wanted his daughter to feel uncomfortable. He comforted her, telling her to rub her feet against his legs so that she can get warm. Tired out, he slept before the little girl. Father was tired, so he slept first. A funny feeling came over her. A funny feeling, a very interesting and amazing feeling she got. What? She felt. She felt her father's love. A kya feeling thi? Josne experienced ki. She experienced her father's love for her. And she also had the same feeling of love for her father. Poor father. Not so big after all. And with no one to look after him. Then she realized, oh father, he was not that big as she thought, you remember? She visualized her father to be like a giant. And then she saw her father and she realized, oh no, he was not so big. And there is no one to take care of him. Father is there to take care of Kezia. But there was no one to take care of father. He was harder than grandmother. It was a nice hardness. He was harder than grandmother. He was more strict, more disciplined. And he was harsher than grandmother. But now she accepted that harshness of the father also. And every day he had to work and was too tired to be a Mr. McDonald. Just as when she would see McDonald's, she would think of her father that he never played with her. But now she concludes and she realizes her father had to work very hard. 
so that's why he could not enjoy like mr macdonald because he must be tired she had torn up all his beautiful writing she stirred suddenly and sighed she had torn up all his beautiful writing he had written a speech and she just tore it into pieces she stirred she was moved she was touched suddenly and she took a deep breath what's the matter asked her father and other dream father felt she is not yet asleep abhi soye nahi hai to father ne pucha what's the matter what's wrong is there another dream oh said the little girl my head is on your heart i can hear it going she said oh dear father i have laid my head on your heart i can hear it going meaning i can hear your heart beat what a big heart you have got i can understand now i realize how big hearted you are father dear how big hearted meaning how loving and caring you are right so now what it is you see this is the story about that how in the beginning she didn't have a warm feeling for her father she had a dislike for her father but now she had started loving her father because now she had realized if father had snobbed her if father had punished her it was because she had done something wrong now she realized that she had been punished because he she because she needed a lesson so now she had forgotten everything and she had a loving feeling for her father that's all we end up our lesson here right and the next we will take up in the next week on thursday till then goodbye